let there be light. I went with the light option because we got things to do and places to go and people, no we don't, we really don't. Hey everyone, it's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 161 of the Love and Stitches podcast. This is the second time that I'm doing an intro, which rarely ever happens anymore, but I don't know if you can hear it. There's a lot going on here today. Something's happening up above us. They're like hammering. I don't know what they're hammering like into the floor or if it's just the wall or what is going on. Maybe it's in like the hallway above me, but it hasn't been constant. So I'm really hoping that it is going to be just sporadic and hopefully not too loud. Um, the other thing is that it's very, very dark here today because there is just clouds over everything, which is wild. So hopefully you can still see pretty good, but I love that I can have my little twinkle lights on. That really creates a fun atmosphere. Today is a very special Q&A episode. I asked for questions on Instagram and I got so many good ones. So we're going to go into that in our um, special segment. And other than that, I'm going to be showing you advent projects up to day eight. So if you have either one of the advents that I'm opening, are they doing it every time I talk? <laughs> it feels like it. If you have either the Fangirl Fibers Retro um, Sears Toy Catalog Advent or a Homespun House Advent, just make sure you have seen through day eight before watching this. All right. I think... Let's just dive right in. I just listened back the or listened back to the intro. Doesn't sound like you can hear the hammering. Maybe with headphones you can, but they're also not doing it right now. So we are gonna just carry on. Okay. First up, I have some progress to show you on a few of the whips that I had last week, and I have some new advent projects to show you. So let's start with this hat. So this is a Muscle Bro by Isolde Teague with definitely some modifications. So I am doing one by one ribbing, and I have done a bunch on the variegated part, and look how cool it's looking. So I'm still doing ribbing here, um, but it looks like, it looks so unique, I think, with the way that the colors are pulling. So I had some issues last week when I was doing helical knitting, which is one row stripes, but I was using both balls of yarn in the same direction. So I took one skein, I split it in two, and I was pulling them both from the center, and it just wasn't looking good. The green was always stacking on the green and the black was always stacking on the black. So I wound one into a ball. So I had one coming from the outside and then one coming from the inside. And now it's doing a very even and I think nice looking spiral. Maybe not exactly what I was hoping to achieve, but I think so much better than just having big splotches of color all over the hat. So the plan for this hat is to continue the ribbing. I think it needs to be like almost three times this because I want this ribbing um, and this color to like fold up on this side of the hat and then also have enough to fold up on the other side of the hat which will continue to be the variegated color but in stockinette. So I have a ways to go and I do want to finish this very soon. What is today? Today is December 7th and I would really like to have it done for a game on well, I, you know what? I had December 10th in my head, but that doesn't really make sense because that's Saturday. So I guess the game is on December 13th. So I have a few more days than I thought, but if I want to finish this by then, I'm really going to have to prioritize it and make it happen. Um, let's see. I don't think I have my labels with me here right now. So maybe when I, if I pause, oh, there we go. If I pause, I'll go get them. But this is Rain's Obsessive Stitchery in two different colorways that were custom dyes um, for me. So I'm trying to do something special with these. I've made Kent a hat that looks a little bit like this. His is just all rim in the green. And then this side is all stockinette. His is not going to be slouchy. His doesn't fold up. Um, so mine's going to be slightly different, but we will be so cute and adorable and matching. These hats have been coming along in the podcast for many, many weeks now. So 
don't want to spend too, too much time with them. But I have been getting um, some questions about the Muscle Bro hats lately on Instagram. And I try to put as many notes as I can in my Ravelry project pages. So if you have questions about like needle size, stitch counts and stuff like that, it's mostly included in there. So go check out those project pages. Okay. <laughs> I have another Muscle Bro hat. I have way too many projects going on right now. I think I have five to talk about today. That's too many. This one though is just kind of a project that's there and for me if I need it, which I did this week. So another Muscle Burrow by Isolde Teague. The cool thing about this light is I think you're getting to really see the colors accurately, but I feel like the camera's having a little trouble getting focused on things today. Um, but this is Suburban Stitcher in the colorway Reunited. Look at me, I'm remembering everything today. This is great. Um, so I didn't do very much. You can see I have like basically like an inch or so, um, but I just have this hat. I cast it on. There was a week where we were like going to the movies and going to a show and stuff like that. And I was, I was like, I need a project that I don't need to look at that is a single color, um, unlike the other Muscle Burrow hats where I'm doing helical knitting. And so I cast this on and I did a lot of it and then now it's just inching slowly. Every time I need it, I pull it out of my project bag or project box, work on it a little bit and put it back. So this past week we went to see a Broadway show and so I brought it out, did a little bit of knitting and it, it's going back away in the project box, but I did wanna show it since I got a little bit of work on it this week. We might go to the movies this weekend. So um, I'll probably bring that because I don't have any other projects that are simple enough for me to work on in the dark. All right, so that's, you've seen all those things before. Um, what else do we have here? I've also made an eensy bit of progress on my sock miss socks. I think since um, Advent started, it's been hard to want to work on anything else. Um, I, I'd want to, but I also want to work on my Advent stuff more. And so that's just a little mental note for future me that when I'm getting ready for December of next year, um, and I know this already, but to really have like nothing else, no other priorities or anything to work on, is just gonna give me like the best experience for um, the like whole of December. Um, but I am having a good time with these socks. So this yarn is Mandy's Makings and it is our Sockmas 2022 colors. So I used the um, Handmade Ornament and the mini that came with it for the cuff. And then I use Snow Globe for the main part. And these are the Cider House socks by Summer Lee. So they've got beautiful cables all along them. And I am doing um, cables without a cable needle, mostly because I don't have a small enough cable needle to go with a size one needle, um, but also because they're small cables and it's easy to do. Um, so that's totally fine. And I can't remember if I shared this before, but I am using a light bulb stitch marker to help me keep track of the last cable row. So after I do the cable row and I'm doing like the next just like rest row where you're like knitting the knits and purling the purls, I am placing my stitch marker in and then I know how many rows to count in between cables. And that just really helps me a lot because if I try to do it without the stitch marker, I get really confused. So I told myself this weekend, I had to get this out and put a little bit of work on it. So this is all I did. <laughs> Just the littlest bit of work. I actually got out one of our past um, sock miss stitch markers. That's from two years ago to put in here. I thought that would be fun and festive. So a little bit of work on the hats, a little bit of work on the socks, but you know, the main thing has been these advent projects. So I can't wait to show them to you. I know you may have seen them if you've been keeping up with Vlogmas, which are the daily videos I'm posting all throughout December, but I felt like Doing the podcast is just a different way to like sit down and really talk about the project kind of collectively. And then also, if you're not watching Vlogmas, if that's not your thing, or maybe you miss a few days, you'll be able to see everything come together here. Um, sorry, I just keep checking my camera because it is getting so dark outside. It's wild. All right, 
Let's talk first about my beachcomber flares. So I have this in another festive project bag. This one is from So Crazy Crafter. I want to say I got this last year, but I don't really remember. Oh, maybe? So Crazy Crafter? It's hard to see because I had to block my own face from the camera to be able to see it. Okay, I have done quite a bit. If we consider that I've only been working on these for a week, I feel really proud. I do feel a little behind because I'm behind on my days, but not too badly. So here are my beachcomber flares. Don't they look like pants? <laughs> so I am knitting this with a homespun house, a Molly of a homespun house. Um, and I have been opening the advent every single day and then doing my best to like knit that day's quota. So, so far days one, one was the, like, there's like a little fold over waistband. That took me like three days because I just kept messing that up. But day one, two, and three are all part of this waistband um, that you can see like folds over. And when I block it, this will all like on um, furl and everything. And then I have done days, this one's really deep, this color. I think it was called like plum or something like that. Something plum. Day four five and I'm working on six are all part of like the main body. So there's increases to fit your hips and everything. And I am enjoying it so far. It's not quite doable. I think for me, um, every single day, just because it's a couple of hours, at least of knitting. I don't know exactly how many hours I haven't timed it or anything. Um, but it is a good bit of knitting. So I'm doing 16 rows in each color. And I think I have something like 216 stitches now. So I'm doing as best as I can to really monitor my yardage and everything. And in my project page, I've shared two things. One, I shared the math of how I decided that 16 rows was going to be the number of rows that I need to do. And I'll talk about that more in a second. And then I also am sharing each day, like as I use a color, how many grams I have left. This I think is not going to be very, very accurate for everybody, but it may be at least a little bit helpful if you're kind of like looking at which size you're making compared to mine and if you would be able to use an advent for this. I should have plenty of yarn overall, but I just, I think this is the most stitches I'm going to have, so I should be okay, honestly, throughout the rest of the thing, because I think the least I've had left so far has been like six grams. So that's still a lot of insurance, you know? So the way that I figured out how many rows to do is I, <laughs> I um, added up the total length of the pants. So there's a waistband, there is the um, rise of the pants, there's the thigh, there's the leg, and then there's the flare. And those things are all in the pattern. So I just added all those up together and I think I got like 44 inches or something like that. So I have 24 colors, 24 minis. So I did 44 divided by 24 and I got like 1.8333333 or something like that. <laughs> and then I figured out my row gauge. So at first I was going off the patterns row gauge, which is eight rows per inch. Um, and I was going to do like 14 to 15 rows per color. Once I started actually knitting it, I could see that I was getting a little bit more rows. Yes, more rows. I was getting about nine rows per inch. So then I redid my math real quick and I realized I would need like 16 and a half rows for each color. But I decided since this is super wash yarn and since this is not totally exact, I'm gonna stick to 16 rows per color. This is giving me about 1.75 inches um, of each color. Um, and that should be pretty close. So my plan is kind of like once I start getting towards the bottom of the pants, if I need, sh if I need to shorten it, I will just take off the last color, right? I just won't do the last color. If I need to lengthen it, I can either repeat a color, I can crack into the full skein that comes with this advent, I could add in another mini, 
I can work my way around it. But my gut is telling me that these are gonna grow and I don't need to like have that extra half row in for each color that it will all work out. So you heard it here first, when it doesn't work out or if it does, then, then we will know. But that's what I've been doing so far. So I'm all done. I think you can see the, the increases there. My next step, honestly, what I need to do is try this on because I have been pretty extreme with the negative ease. Um, I'm actually on a size two and a half needle and so I'm getting a little bit of a smaller gauge. And then I also am doing a smaller size than I did when I made um, the same designer's shorts pattern because the shorts just came out, you know, a little big. I think I did them with zero ease. So they were exactly the same size as my body. So this time I'm going for negative ease. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see how they, how they turn out, but this is it so far. They kind of are starting to look like pants. What will be fun is I think by next week, I will be at the point where I've split for the legs. So that'll be really fun to see and to show. I, gosh, I might have to order some needles for that. I didn't even think about that. I need to look into that. Maybe I will order myself like, <sighs> no, now that I have an interchangeable kit that has size two and two and a half, I can make two 32 inches. That will be, um, that will work for each leg. Cause I want to add to like, you know, color 16 or whatever, leg one, leg two. I don't know, I'll figure it out then. But that's one of my new advent projects that I am enjoying and trying to keep up with. My last one, <laughs> this one is a project that obviously did not start this advent. That would be amazing if I did all of that. Um, but basically it's a project I've been working on for four years. I wanna say that this blanket will be five years old soon. Maybe we'll have a birthday party for it. I don't know. Um, but I decided I'm going to add to it with my Fangirl Fibers Advent this year. So I have, did I put, no, I didn't put a marker in here because it was, it was like catching, my yarn is catching, so I don't have a marker, but I will show you where I started. So again, if you haven't worked through day eight of Fangirl Fibers Retro Toy Advent, look away. But here's what we got. So starting from this pink, all the way up to here. And I'm also going back into this project page and just saying like, this is what the color is called, whatever. I mean, I'm not like pointing it out in the blanket or anything, but I just thought it would be fun to include it. And I have now beefed up the notes about this pattern and how I've adapted it. Oh, by the way, this pattern is, um, Granny Stripes by Lucy of Attic 24, but I've adapted it for fingering weight yarn. I originally got the idea from the yarn hoarder many, many years ago when I started it, um, but I just went in like this week and added new notes to my project page because I realized it wasn't super clear. So I tell you like what my gauge is and how many chains I do and what my hook size is. I also tell you like how many grams it takes me to do one row, to do two rows. Each of these are like two row um, stripes and they're just like granny clusters. Oh no, it's getting so dark in here. Ah! <laughs> um, but I beefed up the notes. So hopefully if you have any questions whatsoever about this blanket, you are getting all of the answers from that project page. Um, so check there first and let me know if you have any additional ones. Okay, I wanna show you one more thing before I totally lose light. Let me grab it. And that is <laughs> that I got some new yarn in the mail. Well, one was um, delivered to me directly from Brianna. So the Little Wolf Knits, um, Brianna, who by the way has a really fun vlog list that I've been watching and is also the designer of the Beachcomber Flares. I don't know if I said that either. I'm stressed by the setting sun. <laughs> um, but I am going to be making a lace and fade boxy. Oh yeah, there you go. You can see that so pretty. Um, definitely the colors are brighter. This is a little more purpley, but that's okay. We'll get it another day. Um, but I'm gonna be making the Lace and Fade Boxy with these colors from um, Brianna's collection. This is from the Donut Collection. And I have no tags, <laughs> but I did save the name of it to my favorites here in my phone. So let me pull this up real quick. Um, 
So the purpley color is called Too Good to Eat. And this one is called Apple Cider and it's a Surrey alpaca. And my friend Amy and I are making the same sweaters, the Lace and Fade Boxy, and Bria is going to make another sweater, but I think with this color, so that we can all be cute and match and make a friendship sweater. <laughs> so that came in this week when I saw her this weekend. And then I had two things come in from Mint Rain Hand Dyed Yarns that I want to show you. So one is the 24, I think it's 24 stripes. Um, it is the Advent Stripe sock set for Advent season. And as you can see, I haven't started it yet. Um, the way things are going now, I'm probably not gonna start it. Maybe I'll do it another time of the year, but I am really excited because I've always wanted to do one of these um, during Advent season, but of course I have my sock my socks already going and so many projects. I wanted to be realistic and not be like, let me cast it on and then be irritated with myself. So I figured I'll just hold on to it and start it at a later date. But um, she was so sweet and sent me another skein that I just wanted to show off too. And this one has nothing to do with Christmas or Advent, but it is called Cold Winter Mornings. And she was like, I thought you would like it. And she was right, purples, pinks. It's super, super beautiful. Okay, I might have to get out my light and or conclude this another day because even though it is, what time? Oh, you know what? It's 3.59 p.m. But I saw on the news last night that today is the earliest sunset in New York City. And I'm believing that. It is It is dark outside. Um, so, mm, either in the next clip you'll see me maybe with a light or you'll see me in a different outfit. It will be a mystery. <laughs> Ta-da! Let there be light. I went with the light option because we got things to do and places to go and people, no we don't, we really don't. But I just wanted to keep going right now. So I got my light out and this totally reminds me of like when I was first starting the podcast and I was um, a teacher and I didn't wasn't like getting home until I don't know, probably close to five o'clock and that's when the sun was setting in the winter and I didn't have any equipment and I would just rush home. And I know I've told this story before, but I would rush home and I'd be like, Ken, don't talk to me. And I like would literally walk into my um, house, sit down and try to record the podcast before the sun set because my only option was like being right with the window in front of me and it was stressful. So it's so nice when you can have some lighting and have some more time. Anyway, we are going to get into our special segment, which is a Q&A. You all asked so many great questions on Instagram. I put all the questions together. I went through every single one and I have divided them into the following categories. First, we have our hottest questions, which were asked um, multiple times. We have knitting questions. We have life questions. We have toaster questions, business questions, and then quick fire answer questions. We are not going to be getting to all of these today. I figured <laughs> because there were so many and so many good ones, I really want to answer them all. But if I answer them all in one podcast, I am sure that you would click away. It would be like way too long. So I'm just going to start with the hottest questions today. We'll get as far as we can, see if we can answer any more, and we'll save the rest for next week's um, podcast. So I'm going to see how many questions I can answer in 20 minutes. <laughs> That's going to be our timer. So I make sure that I don't get too long winded. So without further ado, these are the questions that were asked the most in no particular order. Okay. The first question was, is there a reason you didn't get the Harry Potter advent? So for the last four years, I have gotten a Harry Potter advent calendar from Yarn Cafe Creations and Dragon Horde Yarns. I usually like order from one or the other, just depending on the year. And I didn't get it this year for two reasons. The first one is that with the controversy going on with JK Rowling, and just in case you don't know about it, um, oh, sorry, let me back way up. J.K. Rowling is the author of the Harry Potter series, something that I have loved for a long, long time. 
but in recent years she's really made herself just an enemy of many, um, mostly because she's saying a lot of things that are very anti-trans, um, which is not something that I am um, okay with that she's done. And so with that, it's just kind of put a damper on Harry Potter for me personally. And so that was one of the reasons why I didn't get the Harry Potter advent calendar this year. But that's not the only reason. The second reason is that I have made, I actually brought them here to show you. I, oh, I have made <laughs> this many granny squares over the last four years from the Harry Potter advent calendars. And I've had so much fun with them. But when I was making them last year, I really felt a sense of like doneness with them. Like not only like, I think I have enough to make a blanket now, I think I have 96 squares. Um, not only that I felt like I was ready to make a blanket, but also just like, it felt like that chapter of my advent making was ready to come to a close. Like it, I went out, I felt like, <laughs> I'm acting like this is such a big thing, but I feel like I got to complete it. It just didn't feel like I wanted to continue this year, just like crochet wise. Also, absolutely nothing against Tristan and Christy who um, dye those advent calendars. That's not the reason that I didn't get it, but just those two reasons um, from the JK Rowling controversy and it just personally making me feel very not sure about my feelings on Harry Potter and then also just feeling like that is a completed check mark on my project page. Jumping in with the good ones here. Okay, um, the next one is what happened to all of this and that? That was asked a lot. So all of this and that um, was my cleaning, organizing, and lifestyle YouTube channel that I started in 2020. And I was strong on that for like a year. Um, and then when we moved to New York, I just kind of lost the heart in it, to be perfectly honest. And Nitty Natty was growing so much more than all of this and that. Um, that I just couldn't keep up with both of them. At the time I decided, well, I will say I almost didn't really decide to stop doing this and that. It just kind of happened. I was like, I can't do this anymore. This is too much. And it just kind of trickled off. Um, but I wish going back, I wish I would have made a decision to stop, like even just personally for myself, not that I needed to announce it to anybody, but I probably should have. But instead it just trickled off and then one month without posting became three months, became six months, became a year. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> if I wanna ever go back to it one day, it's there for me. The videos are still there. I'm not taking those down or anything. The channel actually just reached um, 10,000 subscribers, which is pretty cool. Um, but I'm just letting it, I just let it be. It is just there and I am not, I don't even think about it anymore. You know what, it also had gotten to the point where every time I was cleaning, I felt like I needed to record it. And so I stopped cleaning and that was not good for our household <laughs> either. So I had a little bit of just some burnout and then recognizing that Nitty Natty was growing and going far beyond that and so much more something that was important to me that I just had to pick. And I picked this and I'm really happy that I did. Okay, this question was asked, I think, more than any other question. Um, and it was asked in a variety of ways, but basically it was like, what does Kent do? Does he work on Nitty Natty full time? Does he still work for the startup? We want to know more. Um, so it's very clear that everyone is very, very curious about um, Kent. So Kent is my husband. We've been married for over five years now, just over five years. And he now works on Nitty Natty stuff, mostly full time. So he has a couple different jobs. <laughs> so he has been working for the sports media st uh, startup for many, many years. And so he still does some stuff for them. He also does, um, runs a social media for a local bar here in New York City. So that's his uh, second job. But then for the most part, I would say the majority of his time, he spends um, editing videos for you, <laughs> for me, for all of us. And it has been amazing. I will say like he took over doing that earlier this year. Like he was doing some last year, but we weren't quite to the point where like he was editing every single video. Now he pretty much edits every single video. And this is the first Vlogmas 
where I haven't had to edit and it has been a game changer. So if you're doing all the Vlogmas stuff on your own or all the editing on your own, I feel you. I did it for many, many years and I know how hard it is, <laughs> um, but it's been really amazing to have um, Kent kind of like on my team, literally. Um, and so, yeah, that's what he does. This business supports both of us. So whenever I say that, I feel like I want to say thank you because literally watching YouTube videos, going into the courses and the membership and everything helps our entire family quite literally put a roof over our head and feed ourselves and um, feed toaster. <laughs> um, oh, and I wanted to mention that Kent's college degree is in journalism and broadcasting. So while this isn't exactly what his field was, editing video kind of is fits into his niche and he says he really likes that um, and prefers that to being on camera. Although um, he has been on camera a lot more often lately and I know that you are enjoying it because you're letting me know and I'm telling him to so that he feels really good and supported. Okay, um, kind of a similar question. Is knitting and podcasting your day job or a side hustle? So <laughs> it is my full-time job now myself and my husband Kent probably should have reversed those questions. Um, but starting in 2017, from 2017 to 2021, it was just my thing. It was my side hustle. I was a school teacher. And so I would come home from work. I would work on Nitty Natty. I would work at work on Nitty Natty. I would work on the weekends on Nitty Natty. And I would say I was working on it full-time hours long before it became my only job. But in April of 2021, I finally left teaching. I'm so sorry. I feel like this siren has not gone away. <sighs> I think there's a bunch of traffic right now. Oh yeah, I see it. Ambulance gone. <laughs> okay, so in April of 2021, that is when I left teaching and we were moving to New York. And so I was able to shift into full-time focus um, on Nitty Natty. And it took another year until Kent really came on. And like, I feel like it really was working as a business. And that brings us to today. So yeah, it was, um, it is our full-time jobs and it is a beautiful, wonderful thing. And I'm so grateful every single day. The next question that was asked a ton was, are you planning to stay in New York City in 2023 or moving elsewhere? So we have this apartment um, until or through the end of June 2023. So we will definitely be in New York City through the end of June 2023. After that, <laughs> we don't have any solid plans yet. We're definitely talking about things, but we honestly haven't even shared that with our family yet, what our plans may be. So I'm gonna hold on to that a little bit for a little bit longer, but trust me, once we solidify our plans for the end of next year, or I guess the summer of next year, I will be sure to let you know. Um, how did you fall in love with knitting? So a lot of people ask like, how did you start knitting? Um, how did, who taught you to knit? But this was my favorite way that this was phrased. Like, how did you fall in love with knitting? So I first learned to knit when I was 13 years old. I saw another person around my age knitting. And then I asked my grandmother to teach me. She taught me the basics. And I won't say it was love at first sight. <laughs> I did like it. And I actually ended up making like a scarf and a blanket and all kinds of things. Um, but then I kind of like, you know, I didn't do it every day or whatever. Um, but when I really started to get into knitting was when I was 16 years old, my mom found a local yarn shop. Until then, I had been going to like Michael's and Joann's. I didn't know that there were stores that jo just sold yarn. And so my mom found this local yarn sh um, shop and then she um, found out that they had a knit night. We didn't really understand that it was like mostly for adults. And so myself and my friend, so two 16 year olds go to this knit night and um, they were really great. And that was at Bliss Yarns in Brentwood, Tennessee. Shout out, please go there. If you're ever visiting Nashville, go to Brentwood, Tennessee. It is like a 15 minute, 20 minute drive. It's not that far. 
Um, so we, <laughs> we went there and I really loved it. I kept going back to the knit nights as I could. Um, and then eventually I, um, was looking for a job after school and they needed somebody to work um, in the afternoons and so I got to start working at Bliss Yarns and that's when my like love for knitting really bloomed. I also learned to crochet around the same time so it was just really really meant to be I think. Um, when I learned to knit or not when I learned to knit sorry when I started working at the yarn store was when I stopped dancing. So I was very intensely into ballet. I didn't think I was going to go to college. I thought I was going to be a professional ballet dancer. And when that dream sort of fell apart, like I burnt out of that, I kind of replaced it with knitting. And so knitting, there was like a gaping hole, I think in my heart and also my like time. And so knitting just came in at the right time for me. Okay. What was the next one? Oh, this question was asked a lot. Um, how did you and Kent meet. So we met in Texas um, when my roommate at the time, I had a roommate, um, Brooke, who is also a knitter, um, that knew Kent through another friend of hers or something like that. Kent was like dating a friend of hers or a coworker of hers and then they broke up and then I was dating somebody and then we broke up and so Kent showed interest in me and my roommate Brooke was like, well, she's single now. So <laughs> they like invited her and her boyfriend at the time invited Kent over to our apartment because we were roommates, right? And I didn't care at all. <laughs> I was not into dating. I didn't really care to present myself well. And for some reason, Kent still liked me. So we started dating and it was a rocky road, but eventually two years later, we got married. And now five years later, we have a dog child. We've had him the whole time, but still, I love Toaster so much. Okay, uh, speaking of, this question was asked a couple times too. Um, let me get my computer. Um, not trying to pry, but any plans to expand your family? I'm curious how others feel about it. Um, so I know people have lots of ways that they feel about this question. Um, I honestly don't mind this question as long as you're not like pressuring others to have children because I think that is, a, you know, there's many, many reasons why people do and don't want to have kids. Um, and so, yeah, um, I'm always curious how other people my age feel about this too. So uh, right now we don't have any plans immediate plans to expand our family. We don't feel a lot of pressure from our family, which is really nice. They really don't mention it. I'm sure they want to, um, but there's so many things that now I can do because I've like reached a point in my life where I maybe I have like the knowledge or the access um, to things that I didn't have in the past. And so, if you asked me a couple years ago, I probably would have said like, I'm ready to have a baby like right now. But now I'm like, wait, like I can travel. I can do these things and I'm, I really want to do those things. Um, so yeah, right now, no immediate plans. Um, yeah, I've, we've thought about um, getting Toaster a dog, <laughs> but then we keep going. It would be really hard to have two dogs where we live. Um, it wouldn't be really hard, but it would not be the smartest choice. I have this dream of having a dog that's really little that I can just take with me everywhere. If I could shrink Toaster down, I would. Um, honestly, I want to take him with me everywhere, but I feel like one day we might get another dog for Toaster, just for Toaster, you know? Okay, last one that was just asked many, many times. Um, what knitting and crochet or crochet project are you the most proud of? So this was asked in a couple different ways, like, um, your favorite thing you've ever made, etc. So I have that in, <laughs> in a preserved bag right here. And this is my wedding shawl. Let me get it out. Um, when we lived in Texas, I actually had it displayed. I had like a wooden frame and I had it pinned to the wall. Um, but for now, I just have it in a plastic bag so it's nice and safe. Um, it actually still has the strings. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Um, it's almost the same color actually, but this is like cotton thread that I use to thread through it and then hang the shawl so I didn't um, mess it up at different points. 
but this pattern is called um, Midsummer's Night's Dream Lace Shawl by Judy Anderson. And it is the shawl that I knit and then wore at my wedding. Hold on, let me back up. It's so pretty. I'm all dressed to go to Pilates. I can't remember if I said that yet. Um, but it is, it's not massive, but it is big. And it was honestly one of the most fun things that I ever made. It's lace weight yarn. I don't remember the yarn, um, but I knit it so fast because I, we were only engaged for four months and I wanted to have it done and ready. And I didn't want to be stressed about it. It has beautiful beads. It might be too bright to really see, but there's be clear beads like all over it. And I really like doing lace and bead work. So I should do more of it because it's just so much fun and like gauzy and beautiful. I didn't have a veil. And so when I walked down the aisle, I had this like on my shoulders like this, and then we took it off. <laughs> and then I took some pictures with it and stuff, but pretty much that's all it's ever been used for is literally just for my wedding. I don't know if you can see the beads back here. Um, but it was worth it even just for that and for the memory. And I've seen people use like shawls like this to have like, you know, if you have a child, you can have like baby pictures in them and stuff too. So this may be the one sentimental thing that I really hang on to and like move with and don't want to let go of. I'm not super into hanging on to things as you may know from getting rid of my stash. Um, but this is probably the one that will stay with me for a long, long time. All right, I went to Pilates and now I'm back and ready to wrap up the rest of the podcast. So we finished all of the uh, hot questions and I have about three minutes left. There we go, now you can see it. So let's resume and I'm gonna see how many of these uh, rapid fire questions I can get through. Number one, can we be friends? Yes. Consider it done. Um, what is your favorite winter season candy? Reese's Trees. Love those. Um, favorite show you've seen since visiting New York? I'm assuming this is Broadway, and it is Beetlejuice. It's leaving in the new year, so go see it if you're here. Um, favorite vlogmases? Um, ones off the top of my head. Crazy Sock Lady, Suburban Stitcher, Down Cellar Studio Podcast, The Little Wolf Knits. I'm watching a ton. Basically, when something shows up in the sidebar, I'm watching it. Um, do you cook out or eat more since living in New York City versus Texas? I would say we cook more here because it's more expensive to eat out. In Texas, we were eating a lot of fast food, so there's not as much of that around here. So we don't do that as much. Um, favorite circular needles. So I'm currently trying to figure out my favorite like interchangeable set, but my Knit Picks um, wooden needles have not done me wrong. They have been amazing needles for the last like 10 plus years and I love them. Um, best Christmas memory. Definitely just opening presents because we like spent that time together. We went one by one and I love seeing everyone open their presents and of course I love opening mine. Um, favorite holiday cookie? The dark chocolate peppermint cookie from Levant, which is a bakery here in New York City. You can order them online, but they're so good in person. If you ever come, they're in Manhattan. They have multiple locations, L-E-V-A-I-N, the best cookies I've ever had. Um, do you miss teaching? No. <laughs> um, do you have a washer dryer in your apartment? Yes, we have like small stackable ones and we have to do laundry like every other day because they're so small. Um, if you could only knit with one yarn for the rest of your life, what would it be? 75, 25, four ply superwash merino. Can't go wrong. Works for socks, works for sweaters, works for everything. Um, any recommendations for stranded color work slash tension? I actually have a video on how to do two-handed color work and it has some other tips in it too. So I might have two videos actually. I'll try to remember to link those, but if not, just go to YouTube, Nitty Natty, color work, I've got you covered. Um, what kind of camera do you use to record? I have a Canon G7X Mark II. They're no longer making them, um, but it, it works great. Um, favorite warm beverage? Oat milk latte. Love those. Um, if you could only knit patterns from one designer, who would it be? It would have to be, right now, uh, my friend Brie. Oh! last one then my friend Brie who is the Little Wolf Knits because she has shawls she has wait shawls I don't know why I just said that I think I'm picturing her wearing her shawl this morning 
she might have shawls, but she definitely has sweaters and pants and dresses and like all kinds of fun stuff to make. So that's what I would pick if I had to pick today. Okay, we're gonna stop there because that was already a lot of questions, which is why I try to keep it into 20 minutes. Um, but if you enjoyed that, um, or you asked a question and it didn't get answered, I promise you I have them all written down. I might just need to do an episode that's just questions because it took me almost 20 minutes just to answer like one, two, wait, I skipped one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine questions, and I probably have like 30 <laughs> more questions to do, but I really enjoyed answering those. I hope you've enjoyed it too. So come back next week and I will be answering more of your questions. I have just a little bit of news to share. Um, Vlogmas is happening every single day from now through December 25th. It felt like December wasn't the right thing to say, but it definitely is. So Vlogmas is basically where I'm sharing with you daily life stuff. Um, there's a little bit of sit down stuff like this where I'm sitting and talking about my projects or maybe opening up my yarns. Um, but there's a lot of just like clips of things that we're doing, whether we're here in the apartment or out and about in the city um, that we're showing you. And so we try to make it really fun. They're usually about 15 to 20 minutes long. Um, the first day is like a little bit longer. I think it was like a 30 minute vlog. Um, we try to make them fun, put lots of music on them, lots of Christmas songs and stuff. So it's really a good time, but those go up every day at 8 a.m. You don't need to watch them at 8 a.m. You can watch them any time of the day, but I like to put them up early in the morning. We actually schedule them the night before, so they go up early in the morning so that if you do watch them every morning as part of your routine, you can do so. And then the only other thing I've got right now is Sockmas is currently running. We're, I guess we're about halfway through, um, but we are going to have closing ceremonies on Friday, December 16th, which is a week from this Friday. Um, so make sure you're working on your socks. I've got to work on mine because I've only got the one halfway done, more than halfway done. Um, but work on those socks. If you want to enter for prizes, make sure you have your pair of socks finish before Friday, December 16th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I mean, finish them before that because you need to fill out the form and submit it and that form will automatically close at noon Eastern time on Friday because then at 5 p.m. that night we are having a YouTube live. Everyone is invited whether you made socks or not and you can come and we're gonna chat and it's gonna be a great time. I'm sure we'll talk some Vlogmas stuff then too. And if you have the holiday bonus package that night on December 16th, we also have our movie night. So that will be very, very fun. Um, but that is it for the news segment. Life. I'm going to keep this one brief because I have been sharing a lot more detailed stuff over on Vlogmas, but just to kind of cover the last week here, we had Kent's mom in town. She got here on Friday night, and so we've had a lot of fun with her. Basically, um, we have gone to a Broadway show. We saw A Strange Loop. Um, then we took her to a bunch of our favorite restaurants, including our favorite sushi place. We tried some new places. We got pizza. We did all of the things. Of course, we went to Rockefeller Center and saw the tree. It looks amazing this year. I feel like it looks better than last year's. I don't know why, like what is making me say that? Maybe it's my own um, where I am in, in life or something, but it's, it was beautiful and spectacular, even if you've seen it before. And um, she really enjoyed her time here. I think Toaster enjoyed the time the most. He, so you might notice that there's like a different blanket on the bed. I'm actually, the, uh, last night was her last night here and she was sleeping in here. So I'm gonna unmake this and wash everything and get it made back up for us. Um, but Toaster slept with my mother-in-law every single night. Um, the first night that she was here, uh, Kent took Toaster out for his last time to go out to the bathroom for the night. And I think my mother-in-law was already in here getting ready for bed. Toaster just comes right in, lays right down right there. <laughs> and 
didn't give a care about us for the whole time my mother-in-law was here, which was is really sweet. He really loves her and she really loves him. But if you want to see more about what we got up to, um, you can check out Vlogmas's day one through seven are out. And I guess by the time you watch this, there will be eight, nine, eight and nine. Yeah, eight and nine we think will be out as well. And again, they'll continue to go up every day at 8 a.m. Okay, I finally started a new book. I finished The Downstairs Girl. I did enjoy the book. It's totally a different kind of a, even though I do read historical fiction, by read historical fiction, I mean, I've read the Bridgerton series, <laughs> which is like, fan, like romance and everything. Um, and I don't know if what else it would be considered. Um, it was a different kind of a book for me but I really did enjoy it and it was good and it all really came together at the end, which was definitely interesting. Um, so I liked that a lot. So I finished reading that and then I needed a new book to read and I remembered that, um, I don't know when, but somebody, when I was reading the book series, uh, the knitting book series, it doesn't have a series name, but they're by Maggie Sefton. And the first one is called, um, hang on, I know what it is knit one kill two they're a knitting murder mystery series very light very easy to read um when i was reading those somebody suggested to me another knitting series this one is called has a series title of knitting in the city i believe they're in chicago i can't remember what made me realize that but i think they're in chicago and the first book is called neanderthal seeks human this, I think, is heading more towards a romance novel, but I can't really tell yet. To be perfectly honest, I'm quite confused on how I feel about the book. I'm already like 10% of the way in and I'm like, is this a fantasy? Is this a romance? Is this a young adult? What is this book? And I don't really know how I feel about it. And then in the book, um, one of the characters was like consulting her pager and I was like, when were these books written? And I think the first one came out in 2013. Like I looked it up, but I guess maybe the person had a pager because they're a doctor. Anyway, I don't really know how I feel about these books or if I can recommend them, but I'm trying them right now. And it's an easy read and hopefully I'll get more into it this week and let you know next week if I can recommend them. Um, we've definitely been watching some movies we've been watching a lot of christmas movies especially with kent's mom here we have been uh, opening up like netflix hulu disney plus every night and just picking something to watch so we watched um holiday on netflix we also watched spirited on apple tv that's the new one with ryan reynolds and will ferrell and that one was funny it was totally different than i thought um holiday has emma roberts saw it last year whenever it came out and it's great very funny i think we watched some other ones but i can't really remember uh, but we also watched bullet train has just come on to netflix that was also an interesting movie i thought it was pretty good and then we started uh kent and i started watching wednesday on netflix which is not a christmas show it's not a movie it's just a show um and we've been enjoying that we might actually watch some more tonight um since we had started that before kent's mom got here we weren't watching it while she was here, but it's a it's a good show and I think a lot of people are enjoying it, so I feel good about recommending it. Weekly wins. Um, I kind of have two this week. So definitely one is being able to take the time off when Kent's mom was here. Kent and I both have been still working every day because we're still, you know, managing emails and doing social media and editing and putting up vlogmas. But other than that, we really dialed down on everything. And I feel like we truly got to enjoy the time while uh, his mom was here, which is so great. And something that I've been working towards this year, um, something that would not have happened last year, I would have been very stressed and not been able to be in the moment or felt like I could go out and do fun things. I would have been constantly punishing myself for um, not being prepared basically for when uh, somebody is coming to visit and like using work as like a, a cover to like retreat and everything. Um, so I feel really proud of myself for preparing ahead of time, 
planning out to have that time and then executing it. And of course it wasn't perfect. And I learned, I've already learned a few things. We have guests coming on Monday. And so I already know now, like looking at my calendar, like, um, okay, I'm not going to work up at, or wake up at 7 AM because usually when you have guests here or when we have guests, we stay up later and I would like to get at least seven to eight hours of sleep. So I already know when I'm making my schedule for the time that, um, friends are coming in to plan to wake up a little bit later and be more realistic in my, my scheduling. So that was one. And number two is, um, I am really proud of myself and mostly Kent, um, for Vlogmas this year. So I think I mentioned this earlier, but this is the first year that I've had any help with Vlogmas with editing. And if you are watching Vlogmas at all, please, it, even if you don't like the Vlogmas, even if you're just like, let me test out day one, just please, for the maker's sake, for the creator's sake, subscribe to their channel, like their videos, just do something to show appreciation because Vlogmas is really hard work. It's so much fun and I genuinely mean that. Like I love doing Vlogmas, but it's a lot because you're recording and then a lot of people try to edit what they did that day that night so it can post the next day Whew, super stressful we don't do that anymore um but it's just a lot and daily like when you're filming i think you always are thinking like oh i should film this oh i need to set up the camera oh i need to do this and it's like hard to be present and film um so that's why i don't know for me at least sometimes in the mornings i will just wait until a little later to start filming or whatever but anyway for everybody out there who's watching vlogmases do something for that creator, give them a little comment or something um, just to show that you appreciate them. I try to do that when I'm watching. It's like, like, subscribe, comment, everything. Um, but if you are creating a Vlogmas this year, you're doing a great job. Seriously, it's hard work and you're doing awesome. Um, so I'm really proud of Kent and I because we're working together this year and we're like actually working together well. <laughs> like we've got a system down now. Um, Kent is editing everything. I'm filming everything. Um, and when Kent edits, then I go through and watch it. I give him some things to change. He changes it. I am then, um, it's a practice for me to not then go back and watch it again. I'm just like, all right, it's done. And Kent's doing a great job. And then it goes up the next day and we've just got a really great system. And so far, so good. We haven't had anything crazy. Even with his mom here, we've been able to keep up our routine, keep posting vlogmases every day, and also enjoy the time that we're having. So I feel like that's a big, a big win this week. <sighs> All right. Come back next week. We're doing another podcast. It leaves one more podcast for December because I definitely want to get all of these fun questions answered. I mean, there's some really good ones coming up and I'll be sharing progress on my advent projects all throughout the next few days of Vlogmas. If you want to stay like more day to day or wait until next week, I will have an update then for you. I think that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for dealing with the craziness today with the lights and the sounds and all of that stuff. And uh, thanks as always for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.